Just want to say special thanks to Undipi for supporting on a Ko-Fi recently via the Omo Pass. Uh, they supported earlier on the month, and, and on the Omo Pass tier, if you do end up joining that, you can actually get your name featured in the credits of my videos. Now, because I've never had a member before until recently, I've been forgetting to do that uh, in my past four videos that I made since they did end up joining the Omo Pass. So, f special thanks to Undipi for supporting on Ko-Fi. Just wanted to quickly say that before to start the video, if you want your name to be featured in the credits of my videos, like at the start or end of them, then I'll be sure to support on Ko-Fi. I'll make sure to remember from now on uh, with anyone else who, uh, yeah, does support. Alright, so just before this video starts, I just do want to say that Mushi's Kitchen Reheated can be wishlisted on Steam now, in case you didn't know. So be sure to go wishlist it. It's a new horror game I'm making. I'm expecting to release it in 2026 sometime. Also, consider supporting me on Ko-Fi if you enjoyed this video, if you want to show extra support. Anyways, let's get on with the video. Hey what's up guys, I'm Linux here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So in today's Godot tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys about containers. So what are containers? Well what containers are is they are a UI element in Godot that you can use to neatly sort out things like buttons or other sorts of UI elements. I'll show you guys examples throughout this video of course and I'll show you guys how some containers work. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see, I'm here in a new empty scene. I'm going to set it to be a user interface scene since we're going to be playing around with the UI today. So I'm going to go add a child node. And if you search up container, as you can see here, we have all these uh, UI elements for containers. Now I'm not going to be showing you guys all these containers today, of course, because there are quite a bit. But the ones I will be showing today are the HBox container, the VBox container, the center container, and the grid container. And hopefully this will help you guys get an understanding of containers in general. So then you can uh, make use of these other containers for whatever other purposes you may have. Alright, so first off, let's go with the VBox container. So let's go create. And boom, so now we have our VBox container. So the VBox container is going to be empty when you do first uh, put it into your scene. You can uh, drag out the margins of it if you want, change up the size of it uh, however you like. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, as a child node of your VBox container, so anything that you want to be in your container, right, it has to be a child of your uh, VBox container or whatever container you're using. So if I go right click and then add a child node onto this VBox container, I can add something like a button. So I can search up button and then get a button. And then as you can see, my button is now here. And then I can uh, type in some text for my button like play. And as you can see, uh, now the text shows up in our button, and our button is here in the VBox container. So let's just go change the font size of the button, uh, just set it up to maybe something like 32. There we go. And if I was to like press Ctrl D with this button selected and duplicate the button, as you can see, it is automatically sorted below the first button. So as you can see now, I have five different buttons here. Um, I can change their name, so we have like play, settings, controls and the vbox container is a very neat way to sort out ui elements like this so if you ever wanted to just you know neatly sort out some buttons for example for your main menu or pause menu you can easily do that using the vbox container and again you can change up the vbox container size however you like so if you wanted to make it smaller you totally can or bigger whatever you want and of course you can individually select these uh, button elements still here as well so yeah, overall, a uh, VBox container, very, very useful for this sort of thing. And also, it doesn't just have to be buttons. As I mentioned, it can be, you know, pretty much any sort of UI element. So let's say, for example, you wanted to add in like a... Let's say, for example, you wanted to add in like a line edit node. So that so this node here, it's used for like text input. So you could like put this anywhere you want to in your... Uh, in your VBox container, we'll just enter some placeholder text like enter text here. So all you need to do to change up the uh, position of your UI element in the container is just here on the hierarchy, just move it up or down, and then it will automatically change that for you in the scene. So yeah, overall, really, really cool stuff there with the, uh, the VBox container. Alrighty, so now that I've shown off the VBox container, let's actually go on to the HBox container now, which is the uh, horizontal container. So again, you can size it up however you like. I'm just going to move it over to the side here, 
and then we can put in some buttons for example just like that you know you can enter in the uh, button names and then you can just duplicate them to have it be displayed horizontally so if you're someone who wants to have your uh, UI elements displayed horizontally simply like this then the HBox container can be very useful in that way so as you can see I've got a bunch of uh, buttons here which are all ordered uh, horizontally and again you can put any sort of UI element you want here let's actually do a rich text label so this is just a bit of text and uh, we can just enter something like a uh, hello now with certain UI elements like with this rich text label here sometimes you might find that it'll be better to go into the layout tab here so let's say for example on my rich text label right if you go into the layout tab and then you go down to container sizing if you go to select expand on either the vertical or horizontal option wherever it shows up as you can see that element now shows so yeah sometimes uh, with certain UI elements like rich text labels for example you might need to uh, check the expand box here just to actually get it to show not every elements like that but just a few certain ones are hey everyone i'm gonna from the future here so um instead of using a rich text label in containers maybe just consider using labels because the thing about regular labels right is you don't have to then go out into the layout section then in container sizing then click expand you don't need to do that because you know all the text already shows up anyway so yeah, just thought I'd let you guys know that uh, labels, consider using them over rich text labels when using containers. Uh, I think color rects are another one which are like that as well. So if we go into the layout here, container sizing, expand, as you can see, now we can actually see the color rect. So yeah. Alright, so I've shown you guys vertical box containers and hbox containers. But what's next? Well, as I said before, I'm going to show you guys the center container now. So the thing with the center container is I mainly use this in my games for like crosshairs so you know I like to drag the size of it all the way out to fit my whole screen here and then I might add something like a, a texture rect for example so I'm just going to add texture rect then we can add like a, a UI element here we'll just select one of these uh, one of these little images and as you can see uh, this image is now centered to where the center container is. Let me just disable the HBox container and VBox container so we can just see this. See, as you can see, uh, this image here, the texture rect, is now centered into the middle of the screen because of how the center container is. So if you change up the size of the center container, as you can see, the position of the uh, texture rect here changes as well, so then it continues to fit inside the center of the center container. So yeah, if there's anything that you ever want to keep directly in the center of your screen or just in the center of a container in general, uh, the center container is definitely good for that. Like I said, I like to use it for you for uh, for crosshairs in my games. So if you ever want to use it for a crosshair, this is definitely a good option because sometimes it can be hard to know where the direct center of your screen is. So the center container definitely does help with that. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about today is the grid box container. So hopefully after uh, I talk about all these containers today, this will help you guys with uh, understanding the other sorts of containers that are here as well. So with the grid container, as it's called, it's not called the grid box container, it's just called the grid container. So we can go create this and size it just like every other one. So let's actually go add a button in as an example. And then we'll add in some text, so just play. So as you can see here, right, when I go control D to duplicate my button, uh, so I've duplicated the button seven times, so now there's eight buttons. As you can see, it's sort of like the vertical container where it just, you know, uh, places everything vertically. But the reason as to why everything is placed vertically is because we only have one column. If we change this to two columns, as you can see now, we now have two columns in our grid container. And then we can just uh, control, these, control D these some more. Now, as you can see, uh, we have even more in these two columns, and then we can change the column number again, and as you can see, uh, we get more columns each, each time, and then basically that changes up how the buttons are displayed automatically. So yeah, the grid container is definitely useful, could be useful for something like, uh, you know, inventory or something like that depending on what you're doing for your game. Maybe one of the other containers could be better for you, like the horizontal container sort of reminds me of like a, a Minecraft sort of inventory. But yeah, 
So anyways guys, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. There's not really much else to talk about. So hopefully you did all find this tutorial useful. Overall, uh, containers are very useful to use, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Omegonix, how come you've never really used containers in past tutorials of yours before? Because, you know, during certain times in your tutorials where you've made menus and stuff like that and placed buttons around, you've never really made use of the containers, and why is that? And the answer as to why is because I'm just dumb, and I didn't realize... Uh, about containers not until fairly recently because you know I've always known containers have existed but I've just never bothered to try make use of them you know because I, I just didn't think they would all would really change my experience with Godot that much but after actually making use of them recently and uh, deciding to try them out they're actually very very useful and I wish I made use of them sooner so yeah Anyways, I thought I'd make this tutorial for you guys today. I know that there's probably other tutorials uh, out there on this as well, but, you know, I know that a lot of you guys like my specific way of teaching, so I thought I'd make a tutorial on this anyway. And, uh, yeah, anyways, thank you all for watching once again. Hopefully you all did learn something new today about uh, containers in Godot. Hopefully you all did enjoy this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.